Have you ever noticed a plant moving? And when I say moving, I don't mean over the course of weeks and months as it grows. I mean in the course of a day. Some plants do a lot of moving, and I've got this one behind me. This is a Calathea lancifolia, and lots of Calathea do this kind of thing as well. And I've got here set up an iPhone and a lamp. We're going to take a time lapse over the next 24 hours. It's about midnight now. You can see an alarm clock there, which will give us a bit of an indication of the time. And we're going to see what happens. Then we're going to have a chat about it. So I'm going to uh, let it run and I'll see you in 24 hours. There are quite a few plants which move in a rhythm over the course of the day. And most commonly, the ones that we're talking about at the moment, they put their leaves up in a vertical fashion at night, and then they'll open them up in a horizontal fashion during the day. There's a term that we use for this phenomenon, and that is nictinasty. Now, that's probably not a word that you've heard very often. Most gardeners and plant enthusiasts haven't, but that is what we call the daily movement of a number of different plants. Nyctinastic plants will move over the course of the day, they'll open up during the day and they'll close in the evening time. And Calathea are an example of a nyctinastic plant. Calathea have this rhythm that they have during the day. You can especially see it with the long-leafed Calathea lancifolia like we have here. It opens its leaves up during the day and closes them at night. There are a few things that are triggering this. Light, humidity, temperature, and the internal circadian rhythm of the plant itself. Now, there are a couple of other ways which plants move, and it's a bit different to what we're talking about here. So there is, for example, phototropism, which is where the plant will face wherever the light source is. And there's also scototropism, which is where the plant will do the opposite. It'll grow away from the light. But those words that have tropism in it, that's more to do with growing. They will grow towards the light, more rarely, away from the light. And most plants do this. Most plants will grow towards the light. You can see this with a lot of our indoor plants. If you don't rotate them, they're gonna have a, develop a bit of a lean. But that's not what we're talking about here. Nyctinastic movement is different to these other kinds of movement because it is a daily pattern and it's not actually reliant on where the sun is in the sky. There are quite a few nyctinastic plants out there where their leaves open up during the day or even their flowers, you might have seen this as well. But not all plants are nyctinastic. It's clearly not essential for survival. Most plants, in fact, are quite happy to just leave their leaves in the same spot over the course of the day. They don't feel this need to open and close, which is interesting. So why do nyctinastic plants move over the course of the day? Well, they open up to receive as much sunlight as they can. That's kind of the goal of a plant, to be able to grow. And they need that sunlight to photosynthesize to be able to produce growth to be able to produce tissue. But why does it close up during the night time? Why doesn't it just stay open? Well, we're not actually sure why, but we do have a couple of ideas or hypotheses or guesses. It could be to help regulate temperature at night time when it's cooler. It could be to shed excess water so it's not sitting on the leaves overnight, which might cause disease and things. It might be to reduce the chance of being eaten by a nocturnal animal because if you can make yourself look less like a plant or your leaves less like leaves like this you're less likely to be eaten which is good for you as a plant and it might even be to prevent the moonlight especially when we've got a full moon messing around with the circadian rhythm of the plant because there's lots of different chemical things going on within a plant over the course of a day but what actually causes the movement what makes the leaves move because plants don't have arms and legs like we do. But they do have another type of organ called the pulvini, or pulvinus for a singular. The pulvini could be likened to our elbows or knees, and they can help move the leaf. 
Uh, Polvenai are particularly developed or large in certain species of plants like Calathea, where they're full of cells and their plant will adjust the turgor pressure within the cells of the pulvinae, which will result in movement of the leaf. Now, turgia or turgidity, I have talked about in another video, there's a link in the description below. It's basically how much water is in a cell. When a cell is more full of water, it's more rigid. And when you have a number of cells, which have got lots of water, it's going to be more rigid as a whole as a plant. So by changing the water pressure or the turgor pressure within that pulvinae, you're essentially able to inflate it to be able to move it into a more upright position. It's kind of like inflating a balloon. You know how when you add more air, it's going to be more taut, more rigid. That's happening with our, the cells in the plants as well. Pulvinae are located at either the base of the petiole, and the petiole is just the little stem which connects the leaf to the stem of the plant. So either at the base of the petiole or at the apex or the tip, just below the leaf. So nyctinacity is the term that we give to the movement of plants in a daily rhythm that are caused by adjusting the turgor pressure within the pulvinae of the plant. Really interesting stuff. So here we are, 24 hours after we started. We have watched a full day in the life of this Calathea lancifolia, and we've watched its nyctinastic movements. It was a little less pronounced than I was perhaps expecting. I have taken a time lapse of this in the past where it was a bit more pronounced, but we could still see the leaves going from a vertical position like they are now, at about midnight, to a getting towards more of a horizontal position, which is just really interesting. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope that you have enjoyed it. If you'd like to do some further reading, I have the references that I used for this video in the description below. Feel free to browse through those. I'd like to do more of these kinds of videos in the future. I'd love to know what you thought of it in the comments below. Give it a like if you did like this video. And make sure you're subscribed to Stop Grows and Avocado Trees so it's not miss any future uploads. Avocado or plant related. Thanks once again for watching and we'll see you next time. Scott grows an avocado tree. Scott grows an avocado tree. Scott grows an avocado tree. Scott grows an avocado tree.